Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a DC servo motor control system, how it relates to gerbil control boards, and give a complete overview of the electronics portion of a CNC machine. <laughs> I received a special request for this video in the comments on my cheap motors for CNC machines and 3D printers video. The request was to create a detailed video to explain all of the electronics parts of a CNC and how they work together from software to hardware, with a special focus on the design for a DC servo motor controller. If you have any requests for videos, let me know in the comments below. I will start by giving a typical parts list for the control electronics for a home-built CNC machine. You will need a PC an Arduino with gerbil installed, three stepper controllers or three Arduinos running my DC servo motor control system, or a combination of the two options that gives you three axes of control, three stepper motors or three DC motors with three H bridges, some wiring, a power supply capable of driving your motors. If using the DC servo motor control system, you will also need two infrared detector transistors for each axis, one infrared emitter diode for each axis, one 100K potentiometer for calibrating the infrared emitter for each axis, two 470 ohm resistors for each axis, one 100 ohm resistor for each axis. Next, I will explain G-code, what it is, where it is created, plus how it is handled by software and hardware. G-code is a language used to control CNC, computer numeric control machines, such as mills, lathes, routers, and 3D printers. It is used to create instructions that the machine can understand and execute in order to perform a specific task, such as cutting a piece of material to a certain shape or size. The G-code commands are typically used in a sequential manner, with each command telling the machine to perform a specific task, such as moving to a specific point, turning on or off a tool, or adjusting the speed of the machine. The specific syntax of G-code commands will depend on the type of machine being used, as well as the specific software that is being used to generate the code. G-code can be thought of as the machine code output by the computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing, or CAD-CAM software. CAD software allows users to take measurements and draw or otherwise design elements in 2D or 3D to be used in computer-aided manufacturing, or CAM. CAM software checks the design for errors and generates machine language such as G-code. The G-code then needs to pass through a sequential G-code sender, either built into the machine or running on a separate computer. This G-code sender communicates with the main control board of the machine. In the case of most home-built machines, this board is an Arduino running gerbil. This control board takes sequential movement commands in the form of G-code, performs calculations, and outputs the results to the motor controllers as step and direction commands. These commands take the form of pulses of changing logic levels. The speed of the motor controller is adjusted by the speed of the pulses on a single pin toggling from low to high logic level, and the direction is controlled by a pin being set to high or low logic level. A typical stepper motor has multiple windings that, when energized in sequence, cause the motor to move one step for every change. So a stepper motor controller can be thought of as similar to a demultiplexer with high current capacity. Each step pulse causes the motor controller to change which coil is energized in sequence. With a servo stepper, there is no step motor but a simple DC motor. The pulses are typically converted into a target point and there is a feedback device on the motor that measures its movement, such as an encoder. The encoder sends a signal back to the motor controller, which then adjusts its output to try to match the physical position of the motor with the target position. A servo motor controller can read the same pulses as a normal stepper motor controller, but it drives a DC motor usually with an H-bridge. The motors on the CNC, either stepper or servo, drive the mechanisms of the machine to move the tools or workpiece. The rest of the mechanical construction of the CNC can vary depending on the machine's purpose. A CNC machine can be built to mill, cut, etch, draw, or even 3D print. There are too many machine configurations to explain here, but suffice it to say, imagination is the limit for CNC machines. Now that I've covered the basics, I'm going to go a little deeper into how a G-code capable machine differentiates from other machines that say take a format such as SVG files. G-code is the industry standard for most machines, but SVG is an alternative that is used mostly for things like vinyl cutting machines. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. 
SVG files can be resized with no loss of detail and are great for images. On the other hand, SVG files have no special machine commands and are not really expandable. G-Code supports many machine commands and new commands can be added to a machine's G-Code interpreter to expand functionality. I wanted to touch on this because most of the CNC machines you find online that use DC motors and feedback control are built to use SVG files as they require less processing and the interpreter is free to do double duty as three axes of DC motor control with feedback. I wanted to use a G-code interpreter so I would have access to advanced machine controls, more compatible design software options, and the support of a large knowledge base on G-code based machining. I also wanted to be able to run cheap DC motors with lots of torque to drive poorly built heavy CNC machine. So the best solution I could think of was to build a modular DC servo motor control system. This increased the complexity by adding three extra microcontrollers to the build, one for each axis, but distributed the workload for motor position tracking, reading step and direction data, and performing speed calculations from that data. Now, here are the specifics on setting up the software for a CNC machine to use gerbil and my DC servo stepper motor control system. First, a host computer needs to be set up with the software to send the G-code to gerbil. I use the universal G-code sender which requires Java to be installed on the host computer. Java can be downloaded from the Oracle website, the link is in the description. It is downloaded and installed like any other software package. Once Java is installed, the Universal G-Code Sender must be downloaded. I will place a link in the description. The Universal G-Code Sender does not require any installation, only to be downloaded and unzipped. The next piece of the tool chain is the gerbil firmware on the Arduino that is to be attached to the PC. On my rig, I used an external homemade serial port adapter and an Arduino on a perf board for this, as I planned on adding another interpreter in line to take extra commands to control other hardware and then relay the standard G-code commands to the gerbil board. Let me know if you want to see a video about this concept. If there is interest, I will demonstrate the concept with an ESP32 and an Arduino Pro Mini. In most cases, the gerbil board is just a normal Arduino connected to the PC through a USB port. Download the files for the gerbil Arduino sketch from the link in the description and install it to the board the way you normally install sketches to your Arduino. If you're using normal stepper motors and stepper motor controllers, that is it for the software portion. If you're going to experiment with my DC servo motor control system, you can download the files from my website, circuitsecrets.com. I will place a link in the description. The sketch for the DC servo motor control system board installs on the Arduino boards the same as any sketch. Now I will show you how everything is wired together. The gerbil board is connected to the PC with a USB cable. The motor control boards are attached to these pins on the gerbil board. Different motor control boards can have different wiring, so I will only show how my design for the DC servo motor control system is wired. Each motor controller has to share power and ground with the gerbil board. This powers the motor control boards and references them to the power bus of the gerbil board. I recommend powering the four Arduinos from a powered hub to reduce the risk of damage to the host computer. Two wires from the gerbil board go to each motor control board. These wires are step and direction. They connect to the pins shown in the illustration. The power and ground are shared from each control board to the corresponding H-bridge's logic power and ground. Two wires are connected from each motor control board to their corresponding H-bridge. These control the H-bridge's output. When one wire is low, a PWM signal on the other wire will control the speed of the motor in one direction. When the signals are reversed to the H-bridges, swapping the PWM signal to the ground and the ground to the PWM, the motor will turn in the opposite direction. The H-bridges have separate connections for the motor as well as the power and ground which will drive the motor. These take a separate power source and should be rated according to the H-bridges capability and the motor's requirements. The only other connections on the motor control boards for the DC servo stepper motor control systems are connected to infrared receive transistors and an infrared emitter diode as shown. These components form the optical encoder that reads the homemade encoder wheels. To download templates for my homemade encoder wheels, visit circuitsecrets.com and check out this video to see how I made mine. Here is a closer look at the difference between a stepper motor with control board and a DC servo motor control system.
With each pulse, the stepper motor moves one step as shown in this animation. After a step, the coil remains energized and this creates a holding force on the stepper motor. This causes the motor to stay in the same place when subjected to forces that would otherwise cause it to move. If the force has overcome the stepper motor's holding strength, it will move and jump a few steps. Because there is no feedback, the control system has no idea the motor is now in a different position. This can cause a drift in the operation of the machine. With a DC servo motor control system, the step pulses are read by the control board and the H-bridge is triggered to drive the motor. The motor does not step but instead moves smoothly from the start position and continues turning until the feedback sensors tell the controller it has reached the desired position. At this point, the H-bridge is given a stop command which is to say that both control pins are set to ground. This state of the H-bridge acts as a brake for the motor as it shorts the windings to ground. A DC motor that is spinning will generate some voltage and amperage because of induction when the windings move past the permanent magnets. When this energy is shunted to ground, it increases the mechanical force needed to move the coils past the magnet. This is how regenerative braking works on electric vehicles, but instead of being shunted to ground, the induced current is used to charge a battery. There is no active holding force with a DC motor used as part of a DC servo motor control system. Instead, there are two mechanisms which can act to keep the motor in the correct position. One, with a gear reduction motor, if it uses a worm gear, such as typically found in a windshield wiper motor, the motor is basically locked in position when not being powered. Any force that could overcome this lock would have to be sufficient to cause damage to the gears. The other mechanism is the feedback system. This system should always be reading the position of the motor, or better yet, the lead screw. The lead screw is the key component of the drive system in most CNC machines. This feedback system reacts automatically if the sensor tells the controller that the motor or lead screw is in the wrong position. It turns on the H-bridge and drives the motor to correct for the change in position, putting it back in the correct position. So this system will not experience any drift unless there is a failure of the sensor to detect movement. If you want to know the ins and outs of the code I wrote for this controller, check out this video. To see a little operation and a few more details about the DC servo motor control system, check out this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please like, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.